So, if you're a Nest.js or a TypeScript developer and you're not following these five solid principles, then you're probably writing a bad code. So in this particular video, we're going to see what are the five solid principles that you should follow to write a cleaner and easier to maintain and easier to read code and to level up your coding skills from a junior developer into a senior developer. So we're going to see how you can implement the five solid principles to write cleaner and easier to read and easier to maintain code in TypeScript and Nest.js. So if you're coming to this video, you probably already know about the other video I made about solid principles in React. If you don't know already, it's actually down below in the description. Go ahead and check it out to learn how to apply solar principles inside of your React applications. So we're going to apply solar principles in Nest.js, the Nest.js framework. And if you're not familiar with the Nest.js framework, it's a really awesome like REST GraphQL kind of, kind of like framework that is built on top of Express.js, of course, on Node.js system. And it has like more than 2 million downloads per week, which is super crazy. And the awesome part about this one is actually uses TypeScript behind the scenes to handle everything. So we're going to have all the features of TypeScript from like interfaces, times, classes, abstract classes, and so much more. And I'm going to use that to apply the sole principles for writing cleaner and better code. All right, so the first principle for us in here is the single responsibility principle. And this one actually aims to have each class or module in the Nest.js kind of application or TypeScript application to have and be responsible only for doing a single task or functionality. So for example, for us in here, we have an application that has like emails, orders and products. So what we have in here, we have inside of the orders in here, inside of the controller, what you can basically do is actually submit an order and actually have people to basically once they submit their order, I want to send like an email, like a confirmation email or order confirmation email to their email addresses saying, Oh, thank you for ordering for us. Here's actually the tracking number or some information after, you know, submitting and confirming the order. So inside of our order control in here, we simply have or we just using in here, we inject in both the order service and the email service. And we go in here, we have this handler, which is a post handler that handles one submit an order, it takes a body. So it takes the data of the order that we want to submit and so on and so forth. Now what we're doing in here, we're basically going to do like order service submit order. So we're just delegating that into the service because this actually the service that is responsible for handling orders, which is called the order service. And we simply have just like connecting it to the database and do a bunch of stuff in here just to, you know, provide it with everything. So we have the products in here. Now, let's try to look exactly what's going on inside the submit order. Now here, what we're doing just calling the Prisma order create. So we create just creating the order inside of the database in here to get the created order here, particularly, there's actually a really bad approach. So here we are violating the single responsibility principle. And that's just because we're doing like we're using the email service, which is, you know, another service, the same service as we have in here, which is the order service. But what we're doing in here, we're trying to send an email inside of the actual submit order inside of this service. Now, this particular method in here should do only one single thing, which is submit an order, like do, does everything that is related to an order, we're like saving it to the database and processing it to save to the database, but it shouldn't actually take care of sending an email, right? Because if somebody else tries to come in around here and actually read our code, Code, he's not going to understand exactly what we're doing here. We're trying to like call the send like order email in here instead of the submit order. Where this particular one, the order service in here should only do stuff that is related to the order, and particularly this method should only submit the order. And yes, Nest.js kind of like separates the concerns already by providing you like a controller, a module, and a service writer in here. And of course, services should only do one thing. In the contrary, on the other hand, if you go back to the controller, actually the right place to call and send an order email is actually inside of the control. Why? Because the control is actually a little bit of like has a bigger scope compared to a service. And from here forward, you can just go in and send an email or something after like, of course, like, you know, submit an order, creating into the database, getting the like created order, and you can use the ID and so on and so more. And eventually, you can just simply return a response. And that's going to give the opportunity to our service in here to be reused across the application because the service service can be reused basically anywhere else. That's actually a service can be imported by another module that needs like the order service. And just by using the submit order, it just like knows exactly that's going to only not create it to the database, but it shouldn't send an email. 
and that's to actually follow the single responsibility principle. So for example, if you go to Postman here and try to submit an order with like, you know, product ID two or something, you click save, it says, Oh, thank you for submitting an order. If you get back in here, excuse in here, sending an email has been called, and we're just simply sending an email, but no, not like inside the service itself, but outside from the actual controller. Secondly, we have the open close principle. And that's actually one of the simplest principles, but it actually has a huge value when you actually apply it. So this actually tells you you want to design your code to be open for extension, but it must be closed for modification. I know it's a little bit harder to understand that, but actually using NestJS because NestJS comes out of the box with dependency injection or DI, you basically, you know, gonna make this principle for you a lot easier. And actually NestJS always, always kind of like enforces you to use open close principle behind the scenes by just enforcing using dependency injection. So for the open close principle in here, for example, we got two modules, one, which is the order module where, you know, the user can make an order and actually pay for the order. And we have actually created another folder in here, which has another module and another service. And this one should take care of like the payment stuff. So when the user actually, you know, submits an order and comes, you know, to the checkouts and tries to pay, he can just go ahead and delegate that into the payment service and actually use it. Now, inside of the payment service, actually where the magic happens. So there's actually the payment service. And let's imagine we've got a couple of payment services, right? Let's say we've got like a payment method, you know, you can use credit card, or you can use PayPal or Bitcoin, or maybe you want to add later on like Apple Pay, so much more. So here we're simply doing just having a simple method, we say, Oh, process payments, I'm just, you know, prepending in here, bad, because it's actually the bad approach. And you can clearly see it on the top in here. But here, what you can give it, you can give it the actual order in here, and you can give it the payment method. And it tries to do either a switch statement or an if else statement. And it tries to do that, depending on the payment method. But why is this one actually bad? Simply because this code in here, whenever you try to something like extend that code, like add another, let's say you want to add Apple Pay for this one. So for example, you want to add Apple Pay, so you have to do an if statement, you do payment method um, equals, you know, Apple Pay, whatever, and you have to do all the bunch of stuff in here. So you have to actually go inside and modify the code. And this code is not only for the Apple Pay, the code you're going to modify in here can touch pretty much all the payment methods. And that kind of violates how the open close principle because it should be closed for modification, but open for extension. Now what you should do instead to basically follow the open close principle, you can go in and create another file, for example, payment.gateway.typescript. And inside of this particular file, we can just find all the gateways we have. So we can have like an abstract class and here abstract classes are very important. And because you're using TypeScript, it just makes it a lot easier. So we can do a payment gateway. This one is going to have like an abstract method it's called process, process payments. And here we can just basically go ahead and use the abstract class in here, the payment gateway, and we can just go in and implement it into like different payment methods from like credit card to PayPal to Bitcoin. And let's say if you want to add this one, we can simply just go in and extend the code without modifying the code. So we're not touching the code we have already made. But instead, what we're doing is just basically go ahead and creating another gateway. So we're just extending that, we're implementing that payment gateway abstract class. And can here you can just go in and do you know the logic or the code to process the payments. And another method that's going to actually process the payment. So you give it the order, you give it the payment method, and that's it. You just like give it that one, just go in and look into the side of the payment gateways and actually going to go ahead and process the payment using the abstract class method in here, we're implementing throughout all the payment gateways very easily. And that's just basically to follow the open close principle. So we're like extending the code, but not modifying the code. For the third one is Liskov substitution principle. So the principle basically states that, oh, you have to ensure that subclasses or derived classes can be substituted for their base classes without affecting the correctness of the program. So for example, in here for the Liskov principle in here, let's say we've got like a pricing and orders and this pricing module in here that allows you to actually tell the pricing of the current orders, how it goes, like depending if you have like a discount or promotion or something like that. And here we've got this pricing service simply, which is an abstract class in here because we can implement it in different strategies or like have different ways, for example, one for a promotion, one for regular pricing, one from like, you know, sales pricing and so much more. And here we have this particular method called calculate price, you give it the base price in here, it just returns that for you. So immediately here, by that, you know, oh, this one basically returns for you like the base 
increase price immediately. So this is basically not doing any modifications. So whatever you give it just gives you that back. And here we define two pricing strategies. So we have the regular pricing strategy and we have the sale pricing strategy. So if you jump to the regular one in here, we got two approaches, the bad approach and the good approach. For the bad approach in here, what happened in here, we were using extend instead of the implement why we're doing that is actually a really bad approach in here because that kind of like using extend instead of implementing TypeScript kind of like violate how Liskov substitution principle is. So simply because we're using extend in here and because the pricing service has already a default method that actually does the calculation and everything, TypeScript doesn't tell us, oh, you need to go ahead and implement that. And that's actually a huge mistake because the regular in here should be have it should have like a different pricing from you know the pricing service itself. How we should do it instead is basically how we had and use implement. And because when you use implement in here, you have to implement every single method. Because if you don't do it, TypeScript is basically just going to complain and say, oh, because you're implementing that you have to go ahead and define the method. So you have to do calculate price in here, you have to, you know, basically return that or you can just do whatever you want with it. And for example, for the sale in here, that's the same thing, we can just, you know, the bad approach in here, you never want to use extend because that's pretty bad. Instead of use implement and you can implement your own kind of like calculate price in here, you have that logic, for example, in here, we can have like a 20% discount. So doing it this way, we can go ahead and simply just, you know, follow the list cost substitution principle in here. For example, in here, we got like the price and service. So we do private, pricing services and we just put the pricing service in here and here we're injecting a particular pricing service let's say right now for this particular season because we have no promotions or something i just want to go ahead and use a regular pricing strategy in here just as simple as that and i can just inject that and because this pricing service is basically the parent of this one so you can just interchangeably use that without any issues and here we're using the calculate price in here which is the same method it can just work fine so if we go back to Postman and try to get the price in here, the in here tells us the regular price, which is has no discounts or promotions, five four hundred dollars. But let's say we came to you know the promotion season, the Black Friday or something. I want to change my pricing strategy in here simply with another one, so I can just easily swap it out without doing or changing any code or modifying any code. So I can simply just go in and use the sale pricing strategy right now. I can just inject it. And because you know, it's part of the pricing service, I have to change nothing It implements the same method, I have to change nothing. So that's pretty good. If I save that I actually have my server restarted, I go back to postman in here and try to do the same thing. I was curious when you have now like a 20% discount, it's as simple as that with a single line of change, I can use different pricing strategies. And that's what the list cost substitution principle is. For the fourth principle, we have the interface segregation principle. The principle is simply about defining fine grade interfaces that are tailored to the specific needs of the consumers. And of course, this is actually going to allow you to avoid creating large interfaces with unnecessary methods that will not be used, you know, by you know everything, but instead just splitting them into smaller interfaces so, so they can be reused and correctly used across you know different packages or modules. So for example, in here for the interface segregation principle, we got like a notification folder. That's all we have in here. And let's say for this notification in here, we have a notification.interfaces.typescript. So here for the bad approach is actually going and actually making an interface. And actually for and actually for the interface segregation principle, it's all about interfaces and how you define your interfaces correctly. So here we're going to use TypeScript interfaces in our favor. So for example, one here for the bad approach is not like separating the concerns. So you so let's say here we have like an interface, a notification interface that what we want to use this for is actually like, for example, for sending an email, which only needs like the two and subjects. For example, for SMS, we need the phone number and message and for push notification, we need like the user ID and the title. So just putting them together makes it super hard to read that one. And of course, makes like using specific values and like using interfaces very hard because you're using data that you don't need most of the time. So instead of doing it this way, what you should do, you need to split those into a smaller kind of interfaces, each does one thing and doesn't work. For example, email notification, we only need the email properties, the SMS notification, we only need the SMS properties, and so on and so forth. And of course, because we don't need all of that data, what we have to introduce, we have to introduce like the optional TypeScript symbol in here to make them all optional because you don't know when you have to use that or not have to use that. It makes it very hard to read. But instead, this one, it just like gives you the correct, you know, required and you can just use it correctly and in a very, very clean way. And for example, imagine you can use that inside of the service, you want to send an email for the bad way in here, you're going to basically use the notification here and a notification. Remember, 
like it has pretty much everything in here. It doesn't only have the properties or the fields that are only related to the email, but instead it has pretty much everything shafted out into, in, into that one. But instead what you should do simply just, you know, use those small interface that you created. And that's what interface segregation principle is all about. For the fifth and the last principle, we have the dependency inversion principle. The principle is actually for depending on abstractions rather than concrete implementations. And this just basically allows you to have a loose coupling between your components and facilitates easier testing and maintenance inside of your code base. So for dependency and version principle, we have this like storage module in here. Let's imagine we have this controller where a user just basically going to send like a get request, going to ask for a file and a file name in here. And we're going to go ahead inside of our storage. For example, we have, you know, we're using, let's say, Amazon S3, or maybe you're using Google Cloud Storage, something like that, or maybe Azure, whatever type of implementation you have behind the scenes. So you go inside of that you one, you grab the file name, and you go and call the storage service, find Amazon S3 file, and you actually give it a file name and return it. And yes, this is bad. This violates the dependency inversion principle. Okay, why is that? So let's go in inside of the storage service and go inside of the class particular in here. So this is actually what we have here because this storage service should be independent from the actual concrete implementation. And here the concrete implementation is actually, you know, finding it from Amazon S3, or maybe the other function we have in here, oh, find Google Cloud storage file, you know, we have this very small concrete implementation inside of the service itself. And this, of course, it just like gives you a very fine grain kind of like details of how everything should be done. But instead, this should be abstracted, how we should go down in here, and we should go in and create an abstract class that so called oh, abstract class storage fetcher. And this one gonna allow you to implement a specific one, which is called the find file, which give it a fine name, and you return basically the some, you know, the file contents of that one, and using this storage fetcher, because it's an abstract class. So inside of in here, we can implement different fetchers going from the S3 fetcher or the Google Cloud Storage fetcher. So here we can just simply, for example, for the S3, we can do a class that implements the storage fetcher. And because you know, they share the same method in here, we can implement basically the same one, they have the same interface, they have the same method name in here, the find file, they return the same thing. And here we can just, you know, have whatever kind of implementation that because this one simply is related to like the S3. And the same thing goes with the Google Cloud Storage in here. So you can have different ones. If you want to add another one, you can simply go ahead and add another fetcher, another service in here, you can simply inject it, you can have whatever implementation inside of it done. Now inside our storage module in here, what we can do, we can go like, for example, Oh, I want to use this syntax for the providers where you can provide a class, which is, you know, the abstract class, which is our like storage fetcher. Remember, this is the abstract class we have. And I can tell it to use a particular class either to use the Google Cloud Storage, or the S3 storage, let's say I wanted to use the S3 storage in here, so I can get back and I can go to my controller. So instead of a controller, you can use like the storage fetcher in here, simply, I can do the storage and it can just simply go in and use find file. And that's it. And if I ever want to swap between those instead of the module itself, I can just go in and change between the storage or the S3 kind of implementation into the Google Cloud implementation. And that kind of like inverses the implementation or the dependencies from going to, you know, depending on the actual service and putting everything inside of the service, extracting it into their own kind of like services and fetchers to handle the data instead of like putting it all together in here. And that's for following the dependency inversion principle. All right, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoy the whole principles in NestJS and TypeScript and catch you hopefully in the next ones.